The 601st edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. You can win up to 325 times your entry with their brand new pick eight. Sign up today with promo code MMASGPN to claim your special pick and first time deposit offer of up to 250 bucks in bonus cash. That's underdogfantasy.com, promo code MMASGPN. And we're also brought to you by Rhythm. Get the best data driven props with Rhythm. Claim your seven-day free trial today by going to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash rhythm. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash R-I-T-H-M-M. Hi, ho, Generinos. Welcome to episode 601 of the MMA Gambling Podcast and the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. That again, too. I think I'm a clone now. All one word on uh, Facebook. Who loves my humor, loves my and my co host dynamic, and says uh, we make him laugh even when he's trying to put his one year old to bed. So that is the uh, way to my heart and to a dedication if I've ever heard one. So thank you, sir. I'm assuming, sir, that there are a few ladies out there, but mostly your sirs. Uh, thank you for that. And hopefully, you're watching and are listening to this episode because we have a uh, second half of our LFA 187 episode. If you're looking for some MMA action this weekend, pretty quiet weekend, but we have some high level MMA in the form of LFA. So as I said, yesterday was we uh, did the first five fights that we wanted to cover. Um, talked a little bit about um, Gumby's results from this past weekend. And today we're going to do the top five fights on the card on the main card and gumby will give us uh, some bonus picks it's a 15 fight card so we hopefully have some uh, lightning round picks for us those i wouldn't ignore those because they tend to hit as well it seems even when gumby doesn't put a heck of a lot of research or thought into his picks they come through so let's bring him in i keep saying his name gumby 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 it's uh man of the hour daniel gumby Vreeland. hello yeah, I got a couple of bonus picks this time, although the bottom of this card is a, a little thin on the experience, uh, which, I, I mean, they, they tend to do that a little bit with their Brazilian cards anyway, because this is their, like, lone chance to fill up the card with all the, you know, hot prospects that they know are down there in Brazil without having to, like, pay travel fees for everybody, um, and it's how they kind of build up their Brazilian half of their roster, so... It, it's a little light on experience and even a couple of the first fights we talked about were a little light on experience yesterday, but uh, I do have a couple that we'll get into with the lightning round. So make sure you tune in into later. Yes. Don't run away. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. You, I forgot. We should say it off the we top. Gotta, we right? got to get better at saying that at the top. Cause that, <laughs> this is when, this is when the numbers actually go up and uh, we do appreciate when you subscribe, just remember yes. that button down there, you hit subscribe, you turn the notifications off, changes your life. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> makes our life better. So, uh, yes, exactly. you know, do a, do a good thing for good people. Help us. Yeah. We're, we're great people. Help us get rich off of YouTube. Come on. YouTube doesn't, doesn't need, uh, doesn't need any more money. Help us get rich off YouTube. We want to be YouTube millionaires. Um, all right. Covering LFA. LFA 187 uh, is going down this week. And yesterday, uh, we covered, as I said, five fights. Uh, it's going, if you didn't hear that episode, here's a quick quick breakdown of what we're talking about. LFA 187, Brazil versus Latin America. Sao Paulo, Brazil, this Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time on UFC Fight Pass. So the prelims are 9 p.m.? Is that right? No, I think that's the main card. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, Topology doesn't have a prelim. And the, uh, the prelims, they typically give you on YouTube. Um, okay. And it's usually not all of them. So I think we're going to get like, you know, probably one or two of the ones from yesterday will be on the main card along with the okay. five we're going to break down today. Usually yeah. like six or seven fights on the main card. And then, um, you know, that'll leave eight at least for the prelims. And you'll probably only get four of those. Then they'll probably have four dark prelims, uh, which yeah. bring you back to your days of yeah. watching, you know, four of the five uh, UFC prelims on Facebook. Remember when we you have to watch oh, yeah. one? I remember. Facebook. Yeah, the Facebook era. And then there'd be one dark one before that. And I'd be like, the hell? <laughs> yep. It it be true, uh, the good old days. Uh, the literally dark days of, of MMA. All right, uh, actually, before we give you picks, let me tell you about uh, some stuff happening in our network right now, or on our network. The latest episode of SGP Stories is out on Patreon. And the guys do a forensic files style, a deep dive on the Bobby Petrino motorcycle accident and that cost him his job. That's sportsgamblingpockets.com slash Patreon. Check that out. And plus, when you're checking things out, make sure to check out the WNBA Gambling Podcast. Astral and Scott have started out red hot with their locks. So check out those boys on YouTube and, and or podcatcher of your choice. 
All right. Uh, Scott Reichel knows every sport. He does. He's a really good tennis handicapper. And I yep. don't, I think I, I've said it on a podcast before and then got hate from John. I don't yep. watch tennis. I don't enjoy yep. tennis. Uh, I, I don't, but it seems like he's always winning. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He come and he was uh heavy in our discord on uh Saturday uh, with the pay-per-view. So yeah, he, he knows his MMA. Yeah. So Scott Rachel also knows WNBA. So check him, check him out. Uh, and Terrell, the, the villain of course is uh, knows his, his uh, basketball of both uh, genders. All right. Let's jump into this here event. Um, main card. We cover one main card uh, fight yesterday. Uh, the Bertoso Fernandez fight. Gumby is uh, high on Bertoso going forward, so we'll have to check that out. Uh, this is a men's fight now. It is featherweight Pedro Giretto from Brazil, Leonardo Solano from Latin America, Venezuela. This is Brazil versus Latin America, uh, if I didn't mention that, is what they're billing this. Uh, we had some Brazil-Brazil action on the on the uh, prelims, but it uh, looks like the main card is all of Brazil versus Latin America. All right. No odds yet have dropped for this uh, midweek. We usually should have it by then. Uh, and then you can get in the Discord and we can chat about the odds. All right. Solano, 3-0 with two knockouts. This is his debut in LFA. Used by that lightweight. Doretto Macaral. 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 <laughs> M-A-C-A-R-R-A-O. Do you know what that means? Yeah, macaroni. Yes. There you go. Big, big macaroni. <laughs> big macaroni. Is five and oh, yeah. The AO or RAO is RAO yeah, means, that means big. AO, AO is the suffix that means big, so yeah, it All means right. big macaroni. <laughs> Fantastic. Big macaroni is five and oh, two knockouts, three submissions. He's finished everyone. This is his debut in LFA. He's not fought since June 2023. Used to fight at flyweight. So we have a former lightweight versus former flyweight here. Go ahead. So I think uh, I, I think Doretto is going to be a big favorite here. I'm going to say like negative 325 to Solano's plus 300. Uh, and, and basically the reason being is just that like, I think you're going to see every single Brazilian on this card come in as a favorite. Um, I, just based on the experience level, the gyms, you know, whatever you want to say, I think you're going to see every single Brazilian come in here as a favorite. I'm not going to like a lot of underdogs. I'm not going to be in on the Latin American side very often. And it's not because I'm just like tooting the Brazilian horn, but like, I, I think they did themselves a disservice with this matchmaking and deciding that they needed a Brazilian against a, a Latin American fighter on every single fight. Um, this is not one of those fights though. I, I like a big swing here on Solano. Uh, and the reason being is first of all, I really like his jujitsu. I don't know if his wrestling is going to play up enough for it to matter, but both his positional jujitsu and his, for that matter, his ground and pound is pretty damn good too. He looks really good when he gets people down. Um, Doretto, he seems like he's got some chance to keep his feet and possibly, you know, do some, I, I mean, he, all of his takedowns that I've seen mostly seem like they're judo based. Um, which I don't know will play well against Solano, but like maybe it gives me hope that he'll, Solano will get in on his legs because those who are well touted in judo and use a lot of judo throws tend not to be really good at defending a double leg. And then on top of that, I will just say Doretto stands really upright. Uh, I, I ultimately think he's the better striker, but I think how upright he stands and the fact that Solano is going to want this on the ground and, and possibly be pushing for that. I think it's at least worth a sprinkle on Solano here. So, uh, you know, like I said, don't like a lot of dogs on this card. Don't like a lot of non-Brazilians, but I'm going to give Solano a try. So give me Solano, my guess, plus 300. Woohoo, plus 300. All right. Lock him in, Solano, plus 300. Exciting, exciting start to the card. Hopefully people aren't mad that you're chasing dogs. They're not mad when they hit, let me tell you. Um, they, right, weren't, we're going... they weren't mad about the Neiman Grace. Although one guy was mad about exactly. the Neiman Gracie one, but only before <laughs> the fight, not after it. Yeah, yeah. people will find a, a reason to be mad. Um, <laughs> all right, we can't cater to people, Gumby. We have to cater no. to non-people. All right, we're going down to Bantamweights. Apollo Gomez from Brazil. Lionel Abogier. Abogier. Abogier, I'm going to stick with. Argentina. Uh, this is... Abogier. If I'm... Abba Hare. All right. Yeah, that's right. The J would be an H. Abba Hare. This is uh, three five minute rounds. Bantamweight. Abba Hare is La Bestia. Bestia. The Beast. Not a hard one. Or the Bestia should be, but it's the Beast. Uh, 10 and 2. Two knockouts, eight submissions. So he's finished everyone. Uh, I 
forgot to check if he's been finished at all. Does this guy owe us rounds or not? Let me see. Does he owe us rounds? Yes, he's never been finished, so he doesn't owe us rounds. He owes us finishes? I don't know. Anyhow, this is his LFA debut. He's won four straight fights all via submission. He's used to fight at uh, featherweight and lightweight and is a regional champion. Gomez Deuce Daguara, which is a nickname that we have already had before. God of Got War. Him. Yes. Nine and one with one no contest. Four knockouts, three submissions. He's been submitted one time. 0 and 0 with one no contest in LFA. 2 and 0 with one no contest over his last three. No contest was his last fight. Uh, he's not lost fights since April 2022. Used to fight at flyweight. Three years younger, two inches taller, two inches reach over Abel Hair. So former flyweight is bigger than a former lightweight. Uh yeah, you would imagine. Uh, <laughs> uh I I I, like I said, I think most of the Brazilians or all of the Brazilians here are going to come in favorites. We'll say Gomes, negative 200. I think this is probably one of the closer ones, mostly just because Ebo Hare has good jiu-jitsu. Um, his, his transitions on the ground particularly look really good, um, and he's aggressive with it. Uh, so he's both aggressive and maybe doesn't put himself out of position all that much, but he is really limited on the feet. Uh, and Gomes is, you, you can tell that's where he's most comfortable. Um, Gomes is like a, you know, first of all, much, much, much faster than Ebo Hare. And he's like a stance switch guy. So he's really tough to get a read on. Sometimes that makes him a tough, harder, uh, touch harder to get the takedown on as well. Um, also anytime I've seen Gomes put up against the cage, when somebody's looking for a double leg and he gets an underhook, he turns them exceptionally fast and then throws knees to the midsection. So like, Abo Hare, I don't think has the wrestling to get him down in the first place. And then even if he tries to wear him on wear on him on the cage, I think he's going to get the worst of that too. So um, at the end of the day, I like Gomes here. Uh, I think I like him for you know a lot of different reasons, but definitely for the striking. All right, and you thought about minus two hundred, right? Right around minus two hundred. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll take less though. If they want to give you a better odd, better odds, then we'll, you'll, he'll gladly take it. Yeah. All right. Um, what are we going to move on to now, ladies and gentlemen? Actually, let me tell you about Underdog Fantasy. All right. Um, he didn't take Underdog there, but Underdog Fantasy is the place to go for pick eight is now live. You can create entries with up to eight picks, and Underdog will automatically double flex entries so you can miss up to two picks and still win your entry. With more picks to make and extra ways to win, the excitement is higher than ever. The best part, you can win up to 325 times your original amount. You can now use specials and boost on all flex entries. Do you have any plays coming up this week, Gumby? Sure. Give me uh, Jared Kelnick on Tuesday. Uh, Kelnick's been white hot for the Braves. Uh, his higher than one and a half total bases. All right. There you go. Um, that is, yeah. So he's actually coming through. The the hyped prospect is finally coming yeah, through. Yeah, he's, oh, he's, he's been, uh, they moved him to the leadoff spot when Michael Harris got hurt. And of course, obviously yeah. Ronald Acuna has been hurt too. Uh, and he's got home runs, if I'm not mistaken, in two of his last four games and a, or three of his, two of his last five games and a double in another one. So he's gotten it done with one swing in three of his last five. This sounds like classic Kalanick though. He, he has bursts and then he'll be like. He's hitting in the two, the he's the hitting in the high 270s, low 280s okay. though. So I there mean, he's go. kept it pretty consistent. He just had to get out of the Pacific Northwest. That must have been the issue there for him. Um, all right. Don't miss out on that pick. Actually, yeah, don't miss out because Jared Kalnick, I'm predicting he's going to start sucking again. So don't miss out on including him in your pick eight. Uh, check it out before uh, Underdog Fantasy takes it away. Uh, sign up with our promo code MMASGPN to claim your special pick and first time deposit. Offer up to 250 bucks in bonus cash. UnderdogFantasy.com, promo code MMASGPN. And... We are brought to you by, we're not brought to you. We're telling you about Circa, that Circa Sports is back with Circa Survivor and Circa Millions. They're giving away $16 million in prizes, guaranteed prizes. Of course, Circa contests have no rake. The Circa Millions is you pick five NFL teams against the spread each week and you compete for $6 million. Or you can survive the NFL gauntlet to claim the $10 million prize. Sign up in person at Circa Sports between now and September 7th and use a proxy to play from anywhere. We even have a deal with footballcontestproxy.com to save you 50 bucks with promo code SGP. Don't have a trip booked for Las Vegas yet before football ultimate contest weekend is a great time to go out, hang with Ryan and Sean, the bosses and enjoy some of the open bar events at the greatest sports book in the world, August 22nd through the 24th. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to two lightweights now. Samuel Diaz from Brazil, Renzo Corti, not Henzo because he's not from Brazil. He is from Paraguay. And as I said, this is at, uh, what did I say? Is that lightweight? Yes. Lightweight. Uh, I'll tell you about, Corti first, Elko is the nickname, E-L-C-H-O. It's like Echo with an L. It doesn't sure. mean something, Gumby. 
not that I know. No idea. Doesn't it doesn't mean like a big type of food of any elbow pasta, maybe. Big big elbow pasta. Big elbow pasta. Big elbow pasta is nine and four. Two knockouts, four submissions. He's been knocked out three times. This is his debut in LFA. He's won nine of ten. He did get knocked out in his last fight, though. He's fight at welterweight 2014 Pro on May debut. Diaz, nine and two, four knockouts, five submissions. He's been knocked, submitted twice. So he owes his rounds. This is his debut in LFA as well. He's won six straight fights. He's not lost since September of 2019. All right, break it down. I got Diaz, negative 250 is my guess. Uh, and I'm going to ride with him here. Uh, not just because he's the Brazilian. I want to make it clear that I'm not just taking every Brazilian because they're Brazilian. Remember, I kicked it off with a dude who is not Brazilian. Uh, but I, my problem here is that, like, so Diaz in his last fight got tagged right away. Uh, like, right out the gate. He's, he's a little bit reckless. He throws with big power. He gets after it. And, and that got him tagged last time. My problem here with Corti is that he's just a guy who takes a really long time to find the right distance. Um, you know, I've seen him in fights, throw leg kicks, naked leg kicks, only one punt or only one strike leg kicks, and just be so far out of range that there was like no point of throwing him, which also then leads him to the big counters of Samuel Diaz. Uh, you know, I, I don't like that fact about Corti. I will also just say that, like, in general, I don't know what Corti does well other than, like, volume striking. And if you can't find range early, then, like, how how what's your path to volume striking victory, you know? Uh, and even on the ground, like, I think Diaz, in the couple of fights I've seen, he's got surprisingly good uh, submission defense. And, like, I don't want to say good submission offense, but, like, it's above average. And so, for me, Corti is, like, a volume puncher – who can't find range and is going to be fighting a big power puncher who will find range a lot faster than him. That's a nightmare to begin with. And then I don't even think he has an advantage on the mat. So I, I think DS so many paths to victory here. If it's less than negative two fifty, I think it's crazy. So give me Samuel Diaz. All right. Samuel Diaz. He's high on Samuel Diaz here. All right. We are to the code main event already flying through the card here. With winning picks for you. It is a oh, we talked about this man yesterday. Uh flyway fight. Marcos Dijli. He's the guy we talked about yesterday. He's from Brazil. Ignacio Fernandez. He's Argentinian as well. Lots, yeah, lots of Argentinians on this here fight card. Um, three five minute rounds. Let's break her down. Uh Fernandez, Nachito is the nickname. So, like a little nacho, I guess. Uh, yeah, I would say little. It, well, it Iha Nacho is is a name that gets shortened to Nacho often. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hungry. I need. I, I could use some nachos. We actually have some. Boom. All right. It's been settled. Nachos after I'm done here. Uh, all right, Fernandez. Eight and two. Five knockouts, one submission. Never been finished in a fight. This is his LFA debut. He's won seven straight fights. He's not lost since September of 2021. Dijli Talandez, which means Thai. Th- we talked about this gentleman before. I remember the nickname, right? Yeah, We. I mean, we've talked about him a bunch of times. Yeah. Uh, he's 10 and three, five knockouts, four submissions. He's been submitted one time, two and on LFA. He's won eight straight fights. He's not lost since March of 2022. He's fed at Bantamweight six years younger than Fernandez, an inch taller. Yeah. So, uh, I'm guessing Digley like negative 250 here, maybe even negative 300. Uh, and I'm going to sit, I'm going to go with him here too. Um, the big piece for me, uh, Fernandez is just so hittable. Um, you know, he got dropped by a two and three fighter. Uh, not his last fight. When was I watching that one? It was like two or three fights ago. He fought a guy who's like two and three and hasn't fought since he lost to Fernandez. And he got tagged early in that fight, had to kind of survive and like make his way back into the fight. And, you know, props to him for surviving and making his way back into the fight. But if that's you against the two and three fighter, and now you're going to fight Degley, who's won, what did you say, eight in a row at this point? Like, and I think is like a contender series hopeful, not for this season, but maybe... I mean, like, even if maybe if they needed like a fill in in week 10 this season, he could still sneak his way on. Um, but if not, like a win here, a win in January might get him a call next year. Um, so, like, I, I like Degley here. And, and as far as his skill set goes, you know, a really nice jab. 
sets things up extremely well, uses that jab to work into some kind of sneaky wrestling. I think he'll probably avoid the wrestling side of things in this fight because Fernandez, like his best trait is his jujitsu. Um, and he, he actually has pretty good sweeps uh, in jujitsu, granted against a much lower competition of Degley. Um, you know, he doesn't search for like, you know, kind of arm bars and triangles out of his guard because he, you know, those are pretty low percentage. But he does sweep or work his way back up into some own his, some of his own wrestling. I don't think it's as good as Degley's. And like, I don't even know that he'd be able to sweep them. But like, I also think Degley just doesn't have to go there because Fernandez, as I mentioned, very taggable on the feet. Degley sets his stuff up nicely, particularly with the jab. I think he'll do all of that stuff and, and pick up the victory here. So, yeah, I like Degley here. Probably, again, though, kind of a big favorite. So Joe Rogan will not like Fernandez. He doesn't try flashy things off his back. Uh, Joe Rogan does like flashy things off his back. He also <laughs> likes mission control, which is his favorite mm-hmm. position. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is true. Uh, all right. Uh, main event time, main event time. Uh, this is a welterweight fight. Carlos Leal, Brazil, Manuel Mena from Argentina, no, Venezuela, excuse me. Three five minute rounds. This is not for a belt or anything, it's just for pride, ladies and gentlemen. Mena is 12 and three, five knockouts, two submissions. He sub- submitted one time. This is a short notice debut in the LFA, so alarm bells should be ringing. He's lost two straight fights. That's another uh, bad thing. Before that, he won 12 straight fights. Uh, he's not won a fight since March of 2023. He used to fight at lightweight, own one in pro Muay Thai. Leal is the lion. 20 and five, nine knockouts, two submissions. He's been submitted one time. Two and all in LFA. He's won three of four, including his last fight via TKO. Five and two in PFL. Missed weight twice before. So keep that in mind. Uh, he used to fight. He's fought all over the place uh, in terms of weight, featherweight, lightweight, He's at welterweight here, and he's fight at middleweight. One and on Bellator. He's got multiple regional championships on his. Mantle. Correct the shirt. SportsGamingPockets.com slash store. Get sticky with it. 2012 Pro MMA debut. One and pro boxer. Six years younger than Mena. Two inches taller. I assume Leal's going to be a massive favorite here, right? Yeah. Negative 750 probably or bigger. Yeah. And, and this is, again, my problem with this theme is that Carlos Leal's original opponent dropped out. Yeah. You probably could have found 20 different above average Brazilian welterweights to give him a halfway decent fight here. And you're giving him a guy in a two fight losing streak. Um, and even if you look back to that last win for Manuel Mena, he, he his opponent threw, I want to say like a leg kick in the, as he was coming in, his opponent started to stumble and he kind of like picked up a takedown that he probably didn't even work all that much at. And that like led to him dominating in that way. And so like, Apart from, like, bucking his way into a takedown, he hasn't really gotten much offense going in his last three fights. And we're talking about Leal. You said he was 5-2 and in PFL. If I'm not mistaken, both of those losses are Sadabu Sai. Um, Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I think his only losses were to Sadabu Sai, who, by the way, was the champion. So, you know, like, he is a a, a pretty damn high-level welterweight. I think maybe his biggest problem in PFL is he carries his hands real low. Um, but the way he blitzes in with low hands and, and the way he attacks, like it plays up because he, he's got big power and ability to get in on you. I, I think ultimately it like gave him a ceiling in terms of PFL, but it, you know, it, who knows? He can make that, that style work. He can definitely make it work here against Mena, who I think is infinitely slower than him and just seems to not be getting anything going. This should be incredibly one-sided. Again, I kind of lament the matchmaking here and think that if, if we had just picked another Brazilian welterweight, and it feels like there's a dozen of them out there. This would have been a lot more fun of a fight. All right, T. Yeah, uh, I agree. As is, as you uh, have, I think yesterday, right when I said uh, themed themed events are fine. Uh, you rained all over. I shot you right down and told yeah. you were terrible for for good reason though, because there you go. Uh, th- this is actually proof of it right there. As as is PFL uh, often. All right, uh recap and then we will give you lightning round picks. He's got Leal, he's got Dejli, he's got uh Gomez and Diaz and he's got Dorato. So he only picks Brazilians. That's what he's, t- he's no, telling. No, I didn't you he's, in the I didn't take well, Dorato. I took Solana. Opener. I oh, took sorry, Solana. Solana, right, right. Yeah, yeah. He only takes Brazilians everybody, okay? Except in the opener. Right? No, I that's why I took <laughs> That, that's you the only reason protest I protest too much. That's the, the only reason I took Salon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, I Great. feel like, that, especially if he's go. got dog money yeah. attached. Yeah. That's the only reason you took him. So that, that, that'll that give you, uh, everyone a lot of faith in that pick for sure. All right. Before we move on with a lightning round rhythm, 
If you're betting on player props, then you need to download Rhythm. Rhythm is the go-to sports betting tool that transforms complex data into actionable insights, empowering bettors with smarter, data-driven decisions. Unlike other platforms, Rhythm combines advanced predictive analytics with an intuitive user experience, making betting both easy and enjoyable. Rhythm's predictive models were born from the brains of MIT data scientists and quants with over three years of data to help drive you to better AI-backed betting decisions. Rhythm projections have been red hot for WNBA and golf. Claim your seven-day free trial today by going to sportsgamblingpockets.com slash rhythm. That's sportsgamblingpockets.com slash R-I-T-H-M-M. All right. Lightning round. Crash. Bang, boom. People new to the show. This is his... Uh, we have what five other fights to pick from this card that we haven't Gumby hasn't given picks on. He's gonna uh, cherry pick the best of those and give you quick uh synopsis of the fight and who to bet on. Yeah, so there, there are two I'm gonna go with here. The first one, I, I like Abraham Racho uh fighting out of Peru. Um, or granted being born in Peru because he fights out of shoot the box, Diego Lima. Um, you know, I love me a shoot the box fighter. I also think he's probably gonna come in as an underdog. He's fighting a guy named Eduardo Dutra, who is um He's really good at jujitsu and has a nice amateur background, but he is only 19. And I think that that kind of is going to be his downfall here because Racho is just like, he's kind of a grinder. And I think that that's going to play up. So take the experienced guy with a few more pro fights, few less AME fights, uh, and is, you know, coming out of shoot the box. If you're a 19 year old guy who wants to fight a shoot the box guy, right? So uh, that's the first one I like. And then the second one, hang on, I had it right here. I don't want to misspoke oh now Naw- nawira uh fajeda she's a fighter uh she's a 115 fa- uh 15 pounder um i really think that her style plays up here she her only pro loss here is against laney silva who we talked about uh on today's show i, I think she's ha- shown a lot of finishing ability i like her quickness um and i think she's got maybe a good matchup here so I'll take her over her opponent in this one. She'll probably be a favorite, but uh, that'll be my second lightning round pick. All right, there you go. So you got 12 out of the 15 fights. Uh, Gummy has picks for you. And I'm sure if you bug him in the Discord, he'll give you picks for the other fights too. He's that type of guy. Uh, all right, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Put it to bed, but we're not done. Uh, well, today we are. We're not done uh, for good. We are back tomorrow and the next day. More regional May. We're, we're going to go about a week out, right? Because this is a quiet weekend coming up. So what we, and there's, a lot more events next week, so we're going to be hitting you up with uh, some events that you're going to give you a week or so to to plan and prep for. Uh, in the meantime, you can catch us in the Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. You can catch me on my Substack, moneymma.substack.com. You can catch Gummy on Top Turtle MMA Podcast. You can catch us both on Twitter. He's at Gumby Vreeland. I'm a Jeff Fox writer, and we are together at SGP and MMA. Uh, Gummy runs that for us, so I guess we're not both there. Uh, where else? YouTube, of course. Subscribe. Watch us there if you choose, but just subscribe at the very least. Uh, sportsgamblingpockets.com, obviously, is the place to go for all our stuff on all of our team's stuff. Sportsgamblingpockets.com slash store. Sportsgamblingpockets.com slash Patreon. Did I forget anything? I did it in different order today, Gumby. No, I think you got it all. All right. Uh, bid the people for a route to tomorrow. All right. I'm David Gumby Freeland. He's the Big Macaroni, Jeff Fox. And we will see you tomorrow.